So this week we came back to the pine woods because last week we did a shoot here but the lens really let us down. So I've brought with me some of my favourite lenses from the series so far and we're going to start with the Super Iconta. And we're going to talk a little bit about what makes a good lens a good lens. So this week we've come back to the woods with some better cameras and some better lenses and we brought the inside with us. So we're now going to do an inside out shoot. On this shoot we had the chance to work with Leah again, an awesome tattooed sword wielding performer, the kind of woman you encounter at 2am on a Saturday morning in East London. But this time I wanted to take the opportunity to revisit some of my favourite cameras and lenses from this series so far. The Zeiss Icon Super Iconta was only the second camera that I pulled out of the box on this experiment. I brought it back to life in May and we did an Ophelia inspired shoot. I wasn't expecting all that much from it, but I quickly fell in love with the lens, a Zeiss Tessar 3.5 7cm from around 1936. But why would anyone consider this nearly 100 year old lens to be a great lens? The internet is full of people looking for the technical answer to the question of what is a good lens? Is it sharp? Is sharpness overrated? Does it distort? How much does it flare? Is it well built? How fast is it? But ultimately, will buying this lens make me a better photographer? Newer photographers will try to substitute technical knowledge for experience and there's a frustration for them at the meanings of these loose terms like sharpness and distortion. But as long as the lens is sharp enough, true enough, and well built enough to get a reasonable image out of, most lenses can be good lenses in the hands of the right photographer and under the right circumstances. In the case of the Tessar, the imperfections in this 90 year old lens create a unique magic and atmosphere. But the image remains sharp enough not to pull the viewer back out of the image. So in that respect, it's a really magical lens, but it's not going to work for every single situation. I'm going to do a portrait now. So I'm going to move from the Linoff 150 to the Schneider 180. The Linoff lens is a really nice lens, but the Schneider one is really nice. The second lens I wanted to play with was the Saimar 5.6 180mm large format lens. This is a much more modern lens. Comparatively it's slow at f5.6 but that's quite normal for a large format lens. The lens is sharp with the most perfect fall off and gentle bokeh. It really just feels like an amazing quality lens. Sticks. You shall not pass. Yes, you shall not pass. <laughs> Through here. <yeah. laughs> that doesn't look like a, like a weird portal behind me as well. <laughs> So now compare these images taken on the Zeiss Tessar and the Saimar to these images taken on my 5D using the incredibly average EF28-135 to lens. This lens isn't bad but it doesn't excel at anything and it's completely inoffensive and unremarkable, a kind of optical Ed Sheeran. But while this is hardly a scientific test, you can really see how using different mediums and different lenses on the same subject can have a dramatic effect on the feel and the perception of the final image. 
So in the end, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but as photographers, we have the unique opportunity to change that eye. And with each different eye, there's a different beauty to be found. So that's the end of that roll. So we're gonna go back and develop it. But this time, I'm actually gonna do a video and I'm gonna show you guys how I develop and scan my films at home. So that'll be coming out next week. So if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. If you wanna help me out, you can buy me some film. There's a wish list in the description below. And until, ne until next week, happy shooting. <laughs>